We've partnered with Bethesda Game Studios to build a filming model of the Frontier ship from their upcoming game, Starfield. The tested team and I have been having so much fun on this project. It's a celebration of exactly the kind of practical effects filmmaking we are all obsessed with. As we approach the final stages of the build, the ship comes alive with my favorite part of model making, the painting, the detailing, and the weathering of these miniatures. Okay, let's dive in. So now I am doing some masking for painting the interior and the painting goes in some specific steps. You want your big, your big color fields first, like any, oh yeah, I think I'm gonna do, great, I'll do that like that. Um, you wanna do your big color fields first. The inside of this is gonna be a, 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 at least one tone of gunmetal, but it might actually be two, I'm not sure yet. The masking is also this great moment for me, personally, where I sit and kind of really understand the piece. Uh, I've got the broad gestures in, and now I'm starting to like really think about how to break this thing up, how, how I'm going to uh, create scale. I can't paint every little individual thing. So efficiencies have to be found. And that's sort of like the journey that I'm on right now is thinking about ways to layer that in. I've got some vinyl for the floor, which I'm really excited about. Can't put that down until I have the base color of the interior and it's not just primer. Yeah, I love this part. I wanted to give this black coat, but technically I should have done it towards the end, but I wanted to see it and now it's there. And so I'm masking around it, but with these window surrounds, I'm just gonna do this and whatever overspray I have, I can take care of with an easier masking job later. My impression is, my inclination is to do a darker gunmetal here, and then at this break, go light, mm -hmm. go lighter gunmetal and the interior of this to make it all sort of pop and draw your eye. I think if I do that in a brighter gunmetal, that's a really nice, easy to mask transition. I don't have to worry about it over here. Uh, and I'll also pull the door and paint it one slightly different value. Okay. It shouldn't be the same value as everything else. Uh, then I can go in and detail the, you know, those are all black and stuff like that. But I think that's a great split because that's three, that's three separate color values across the, across the cockpit. So for those of you watching and thinking that you want to be a model maker, let me tell you that 90% of model making is this. Super tedious, exacting stuff. And if you find this kind of work, like you can dial into it, then you will have a great time. <laughs> I, I have seen it break. I've seen it break more than one person. I will tell you that if there is one tool that is worth spending money on, I mean, there are a lot of tools that are worth spending money on. A good tool to spend a lot of money on is your tweezers. These are iFixit's EOD, ESD safe tweezers. These are fantastic. I really, really dig these. Um, I also love Mr. Tweezerman tweezers, which I buy at Sally's Beauty Supply. And Sally's Beauty Supply is a fantastic model making supply store. Um, yeah. It's great for tweezers, great for holding stuff. What I've got here is some bright, uh, all clad silver, high gloss silver, 
along with some all-clad gunmetal. That's what I'm trying here. This is my first pass. That I'm happy with. I like that color. Okay, great. Now I'm going to go in and mix some darker colors. However, it's the end of the day. So I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to clean up my airbrush. I'm going to mask perhaps for the next two color passes. Uh, but that's a great start. I like the subtle metallic that I've got. There's my glasses. This is super fun, super fun. It already starts to kick so much more light. Do you notice that? Like there's just all these little subtle bits that are like. This is my floor. Actually, it's the vinyl stickers that will make my floor and I've just got to clear away a bunch of the vinyl and then transfer this to some transfer paper and lay it down in here. It should really, really pop the scale of this. Right now, I've just broken out the colors. I got dark here, silver there, medium dark, light gray. I'm kind of breaking up the surface so that it's visually interesting and it feels right and it does. But now the next step is the vinyl. And I've got a bunch of little tiny nurnies of vinyl to kind of peel out here. Whether you're doing Star Wars or Star Trek, Star Lord <laughs> or Star Wars, uh, nothing sells scale like a tiny little knockout like that. Those are great details to add in when you're doing that kind of stuff. All right, this is over by the chair. Uh-huh. All right. Space is at a premium in this model right now. If I was just doing this floor without it being attached to the ship, I wouldn't have to trim this down so much. But because it is, I do. One of the things I forgot to tell you is for painting and masking, one of the most important tools you can have is a skewer. Bamboo skewers are phenomenal for getting your tape in where it needs to go, for burnishing, for peeling. Just, you can't have too many of these when you're doing this kind of work. Okay, I feel good about that placement. So now we're going to, uh, we're gonna burnish it down. God, it's been a long time since I've done vinyl appliques. Now your best way to peel off is to peel back like this, like in the sharpest angle you can. That way you can use the skewer to hold down stuff that's being recalcitrant or uncooperative. Oh yeah. Come on. There it is. Dude, that's actually kind of great, yeah. right? It doesn't quite map. There's a little mm -hmm. bit of translation mm -hmm. difficulties, but that's fine. I'm just, uh, I just, I actually need to compress all three of these units a together yeah. a little bit. But that's, I think that's actually in my favor. Maybe one of the last main bits of the floor going in.
this uh, transfer paper. I had forgotten how much I love this stuff. It is just fantastic for alignment and putting stuff in like this. I mean, there's just no other way. Great. So much of the time when you're positioning stuff like this, you know it's right when it stops catching your eye for the wrong reasons. There's no better way I can say it than that. But it really is about that. It's about you place everything by eye. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Oh, 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 come on. There it is. Nope, you stay down. There you go. Now you're behaving. Awesome. When you're doing scale stuff, boy, does your stuff have to be square and perpendicular. It's really clear when you don't get it right. Oh, there it is. Better. Lovely. Lovely. All right, I'm just gonna add a few more little details and doohickeys there, but uh, I'm really, really happy with how the scale is starting to pop with this one. And we haven't even added, I haven't turned on the lights in a while, haven't added the, uh, the cockpit chairs and those screens, those are gonna pow, do all sorts of great stuff. I think I can peel off all the masking tape now and we can move on to the next phase with this guy. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> That's a weird laugh. I don't laugh like that. <laughs> um, damn, it looks even better. I'm really, really happy. All right, let's add in just some tiny details. Tiny bubbles. These little square bits, adding detail here and there. These are. This is a very Star Wars kind of moment. That's a very Star Wars aesthetic. Actually, it's a very Empire aesthetic. But um, yeah, you can take the boy out of Star Wars. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's two questions you're always asking yourself when you're doing this final detailing work. You're looking for spots that make you say, why is that like that? And you're looking to eliminate that question because when the aesthetics are all coherent, you don't look at any part of it and go, well, that looks wrong. And that's the kind of place you got to get to with these. Oh, there's only three. Okay. Oh, there's one there. That comes out. The one issue I have is this, this gap in the middle of the floor. It draws my eye and bugs me a tiny bit. And so to address it, I'm adding in some tiny little square details that kind of, they just sort of speak to the reality. Ah, oh, no, that one's dead. So if I add in something like this here on either side, don't, come on, there you go, come on, little one, there. Now they speak to it and it doesn't draw your eye because it just looks like more scale detail. I'm going to do another, another something up here. And you don't want it all to be too uniform either. That's the other thing is that you want to, yeah. Actually, again, you're looking at everything and you're like, where does my eyes, you know how when you're in a restaurant and the way to figure out what you wanna order when you can't figure it out is where does your eye keep landing on the menu? And it's always pancakes. But besides that, in this, you're asking the same question. You're like, where does my eye keep stopping? Where does my eye keep going? Eh, what's the problem with that? And like, mm. so, and then you just slowly address each one of those things in turn and eventually you finish. What else am I missing here? All right, so now I've got these, which are shiny. These are silver versions of the same vinyl. I'm just gonna peel one and see if I can't 
See if it doesn't give me a whole bunch of extra goodness. So I've got this tiny frame here, and I'm just going to put it here. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, this is so much fun. Oh, this is gonna be so good. I love that we did this. This is the Cricut cut this stuff out. Ooh, 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 stop committing. <laughs> no. Now the chair is going over that, so I'm not too worried about that. Well, that might be too much, but we'll see. I'll let that sit for a minute and see how I like it. Uh, am I almost? <sighs> something, something up there. Okay. Dude, it's starting to feel like a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Separation is nice. I'll weather that a little. Actually, I could get a couple of little nernies up on there. Let's try that. This is where, you know, you keep finding that the paint job's too evenly weathered. Yeah. <laughs> like, I need a bigger dark spot over here. I know I have to I keep reminding myself that as I remove parts. I'm like, no, leave a bigger chunk here. You right. Know, like, let it be different. I'm also just biding my time until I get to start to add some rust. <laughs> <laughs> How is that working on the... Isopropyl taking that down. I think it's doing good. Take, take a look at these two. I did a first pass. Oh, I um, think that's great. Kate. Yeah, I don't want to take off too much. Mind if I try a little bit? Please. Oh, is it uh, out here? Yeah. Yeah, I think you can go just a little bit more vociferous okay, cool. on the rubbing. But I think that's, I also think that that makes sense to be a slightly darker value. Yeah, I do too. Right, they'd be the abused part of the thing. And this would be even this black color versus the brown because it's like more soot based. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, this is coal powered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the one place I brighten it up the most is right around there. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it would want to be darker there. I would. I, I know that logically it does, but I also <laughs> think that like spatially it'll help bring it into these. Yeah.
I don't know. I think it's... We're going to do the final dressing to camera. Obvi. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like it's a character. Yeah. I think it looks amazing. It's, it's coherent. It's cohesive. I can see the parts in my mind. I feel like when we dress this to camera for each of the shots, it'll be like these wide spaces where we may add a decal or some darkening. But yeah. I think she's ready to, to, to go. I agree. Okay, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's no, really the lighting gorgeous. is amazing. Yes. Between the weathering and the lighting, I think that's what brought it to life. Yeah. Totally. Right? Totally. Well, there's that thing of like the last things you do are the most important and they take the whole thing to that whole other level. Oh, I can't wait to see this in camera. All right, now I gotta do a little painting on this before I glue it in. That's happening. Okay. Now I need a little rub and buff. Buff. To dry brush some of the buttons on this cockpit stuff. Let's just see if that can work. Okay, that's not bad. That's it's there. God, that looks good. Yeah, I can do the finish painting in there because I really like it. Onto, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so now we can slide our friends through here. Our other friends through there. Oh, oh. Okay, that should be everybody. And I should have been able to do that without disconnecting any wires. So we're just about to do a systems check on that. Oh, that's great. Uh, right. But I'm really happy with how that looks. Um, and I really like that antique white. I like this look. There it is. Oh, look at that. Little lights on the screens. That's incredible. 
That's fabulous. Okay. That's lovely and that works. So I can disconnect that. I can disconnect that. And I can stop worrying about that for right now. That's lovely. We'll do some weathering in there. But next up are these two guys. I was just a little afraid of doing this. I don't know why. I don't know why I was afraid. It came out great. happy with that. So now I've got this guy. Let's see what I can do here. Nope, it's that one, right? Yeah, it's that one. So if this comes in here, can I get this in? Or do I have to glue those in after I glue this in? Let's see. Nope, I have to glue it in after. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Let's get something on those screens. And something on those buttons. So this is an example of something you can't see until I paint it. I'm coming in here and I'm going to just dry brush with the little rub and buff on a Q-tip. Look at that. See how much that's all of a sudden making the structure more apparent? And because I've got it on this Q-tip and it's semi-dry, I get this dry brush technique and just like it reveals itself. And oh, I've been waiting to do that for a while. That's been a key moment. Damn, that looks pretty. Okay. Okay, then that's living there for now. That looks great. This looks wonderful. I want to get some chrome on that thing.
This is an example of me, well, when you want something to be less noticeable, you can darken it. I mean, obviously, actually, yeah, you can just kill its value next to other things. That wall is not my favorite wall. I don't like this back wall. I think it's a little grungy. So I'm gonna hide it in a couple ways. One is I'm gonna weather some of these uh, like shipping packages here and I'm gonna place them in front so they draw your attention. Uh, and right now I'm doing a kind of, uh, it's not a final weathering pass, but it's the beginning of the last weathering passes. This is just a single value. It's just a, a black wash, but I'm just going in and I'm just sort of taking care of whatever details need a little more refining, you know, down in the corners. And I'm just trying to make it feel like it's not brushwork, but like I'm actually seeing wear from people. Uh, and yeah, just sort of going through and buttoning it down. Looking for everything that's catching my eye in the wrong way. Yeah, here we go. There's weathering the piece and then there's weathering in situ. And weathering in situ is like the last bit, but boy, is that fun. Just like, how do these parts relate to each other? Yeah, you get dirtier, that's for sure. slowly it this kind of work feels like you're not doing a lot for a while and then it starts to take shape and you start to see you start to see what you were originally intending there we go that looks yeah see i'm starting to be able to see it and do a little uh, uh, and do a little uh, uh. yeah that separates that out that too. Sometimes if you have a silver but it's not bright enough, you can paint it on and then you can get it to feel even brighter by painting the dark around it. I can bring you out some kind of cool details and separate things out. Um. Now, I need a slightly different wash. I just need a slightly different color value. And then let's lighten this up. A little burnt umber. Now, normally, lightening up dark colors is not a great thing to do because it's really hard to lighten up dark colors. But, oh, that actually worked out great. Let's get some gray in there. I want a sort of a dark, rusty value here. See, that's all I'm looking to do here is occasionally add just a little bit of a warm value and just that little bit of warmth there changes stuff. And just a little bit here and there. Just like little accents. Separate things out just a little bit. Give you a little bit of...
always more than one color for weathering passes. Never one color. You may feel like you're like 95% with one color. Add a second color. You're scared to, I am always scared to, but it's always better when I add the second color. Look at that, that just looks great. And that's a little black and that's a little of this mustard brown. Just applied and wiped off. All right, so those guys can live there. These guys live here. See, that's starting to feel like a thing. Yeah, that's nice. There we go. One part of me wants to airbrush this and another part of me wants to actually brush it. And the brushing is because it gives me more control. But the question is, will I get the surface finish I want? There's only one way to try it. Yep, I like that. I'm gonna go with that. We're gonna paint this. All right, it's gonna take another coat here and there to kind of make this pop, but I'm gonna let this dry for right now. I'm pretty happy with where it's at. It's feeling right. You know, there's, it's hard to get this spread. Actually, I see what I need to do here. Yep, okay, I need to do a little more here. So I was just gonna say, it's hard to get the spread right, but you, it's like, yeah, I'm kind of playing by my own rules here. Funny, I was confronted with something like this this weekend. I have a rug in my house that moves. Like every time you step on it, it moves a little bit. And that's fine, we've lived with that for years. And then I was like, you know what, screw it. I got some carpet tape and I stuck it down. But then when it sticks, when you have to stick it down, you gotta have a point of view about where it goes. And it doesn't matter that it's been moving for 10 years. The moment we decide to put it down, we have to like have a rule about how it goes down. <laughs> it's just what you've got. This is the same exact thing of like, red border makes sense, but like where that red border begins and ends is a, um, is a tricky target sometimes. Oh. Okay, I think this is the last touch. I think I'm just gonna call it after this because, well, I could do this for another 10 years and still not figure I'm completely done, but I think I've added all the extra textures that one could add to such a model. This is so much fun. All right. Um, we're calling it. We're calling the Bethesda Starfield cutaway cockpit done. And I'm really happy. I just want to spend time in here. That's the thing. And that was the goal, right? Like if I want to be, if I'm drawn into the thing, I am achieving the thing that I wanted out of it. Um, the work that the Bethesda designers did is so lovely. The configurability of this is really thrilling. 
And it, it, this, is, this harks back, it harks to the Matrix, it harks to the Abyss, we get a little Millennium Falcon, get a little modern American military, it's just stupendous. And I think everyone owes Jeff Darrow a debt of gratitude for these kind of designs. Uh, one of the lead designers on the Matrix films, and if you don't know his comic book work, you're totally welcome. Hard Boiled is an absolute masterpiece. But I am really happy with this. I've always wanted to do a cutaway with that particular color red, that very military, that patent kind of, um, patent model kind of thing. And I'm really happy with how it came out. Even brushed, it like has nice crisp edges. And yeah, put a fork in it. I think it's done. Dudes, um, can I just say like from the top level, this is a lot of stuff we do on the channel is like a simulacrum of the thing that we do for a living. But this is like, we really genuinely delivered a shootable MoCo filmable scale ship in five, six weeks. Yeah, with a bunch of prep before Absolutely. that. Absolutely, but even still, even given professional standards, this is a tremendous <laughs> amount of work that we got done. Yes. I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> Watching this come together in the final week. Really. Yeah. The final week when the paint started going on, the weathering, uh, having Kate, you and Adam apply all the decals and the vinyl. I could see how much fun you guys were having yeah. with yeah. this. What was your favorite parts? <laughs> <laughs> For me, um, I absolutely love the vinyl as a Greebly. And I hadn't, I've done rub down transfers as Greeblies for years, but the dimensionality of the vinyl and all those little sticker packs you made with triangles and circles and such just made it so much fun to do final detailing on this. Well, and even the way that you were able to take what, you know, in the kit bashing world we would call as like your sprues and your off castings and then use that yeah. as even more Greeblies, I thought that was really impressive. I was really impressed with just all the little things like, cause one of it's like, oh, it's good. And then you guys added that, it's like, oh, mm. yeah. Yeah, it was really cool just seeing the wash and just like all of the um, sort of decaying you guys were doing. It was ah, beautiful. Well, and each of the things that we worked on is all about helping the visibility, right? The lighting and the separation, the mechanical attachments. And it's so 
funny to me that you spend all this time on it to get it to the state where it's monochromatic. And I always feel like, it looks kind of good, but I don't know if we're going to... And then you start to paint it and this whole other ship comes out of that process. <laughs> and scale, scale. I mean, that's what I think, communicating a miniature, what yeah. scale is it? Is it 172? Is it 1300? Like, yes, the engines and the size of this stuff gives someone a scale, but it really is the text. It is some of that lettering, how small these triangles are uh, th that let you know a person is going to be that big. Um, I'm also going to make a point about 3D printing here. It has been an incredible godsend and allowed us to do tremendous amounts of wire work that would have been much more difficult had we been scratch casting everything here. And that 3D printer gave us some issues. There were time issues with getting all the parts we needed in the timely fashion. And it's not like it's just this button that got flicked and made building things like this way easier. We had our own challenges just from the process. Yeah, and, and, and I think we wisely picked where to 3D print things and where to do things like with real uh, components. And I think the ramp was an excellent scratch build project because I know that there's things on that that'd be challenged for 3D printing stuff. Right, so. right all those thin, thin rails yep. and things they like that. always work. <laughs> oh, and then your Chrome application on the rails, the little pop and kick of the things that just look like they're pieces of steel. It is... um. Yeah, there are little details. For me, the chrome on this frame is like my favorite thing I got to paint on the whole deal <laughs> because it just it's, added so much scale. And yeah. it's funny how that there's that one little thing that just like, oh, I, this is a, you just keep going back and looking at it again. Yeah, like, no, oh. I kept adding little, I need a little more dirt yeah. around there. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. was the first job I ever got to finally find a use for Ruby Rub and Buff. I, <laughs> my whole career, I've been like, who uses this? I don't have anything. And I was like, this is it. I'm using it. I used some of the white Rub and Buff to get buttons to stand out. Oh, oh nice. nice. Good yes. tip. Very Good cool. tip. And this is my favorite, like, of all the colors <laughs> you picked them out, this engine color is so perfect. Yeah. I love it. It yeah. just reads so right. I freaking, yeah. And I just love the glow that it kind of produces. Yeah. I, frankly, when we put it together and we just like, finally when the lights were actually in context of the ship, that was just like a satisfying experience to be like, oh, it it works. Comes well, it's together. a living breathing thing now. Yeah. Because, you know, it's a static model, but the lights are the thing that's animating and just watching it flicker having this animal-like shape, yeah. it feels like a living, breathing thing yeah, in front of us. It really does. And, and I, I don't know if I told the story, I probably did, but um, back when we were working on Galaxy Quest, Grant and Mahara did the electronics for the engine nacelles for that ship. And it was the first time anyone at ILM had custom printed a circuit board, but he also did the animation so it could be advanced one frame at a time for the motion control <laughs> oh, shift. And like I thought about that, like how far we've come yeah. uh, to that we could just build this circuitry in with off the shelf components. And I love the programming you wrote for both of the engines and their little flicker. Sweet. It's really amazing. And then Adam, you got to kind of fulfill oh, one of yeah. your dreams of building a cutaway model. And I just, all I want to do is live in here, right? <laughs> I spend all my time looking through here being like, oh, that's where I would store my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the fact you did, you, you did the traditional cutaway red. That's just really yeah. seals the deal. Well, and then it's not a flat cutaway. That's the best part <laughs> is it's, it, it goes with the layout of the ship. And that was one of those ones, because like Norman Sean brought this over to me as half which is totally sensible. And I looked at it and I was like, that can't work. It has to <laughs> it's have not more. Enough. <laughs> and it's one of those ones of like, you know. You were very right. It, yeah. it, it, it was, I felt like I was poking around in the dark for a while. I could not be happier. I've always wanted to do this red border cutaway and I've never done it before this model. <laughs> um, I, I gotta give a shout out also to the aesthetics that we've been working with because they come from Bethesda's game designers and they're, they're really spectacular. I was really yeah. impressed. Like the talk about the cockpit, like the design on the chairs, the amount of detail that they put on that. I was impressed for yeah. game access. Yeah, that was good. It really has that NASA punk aesthetic. Yeah, a hundred percent. This was. I, I'm still double checking myself. Is this really as much fun as I thought I just had? It really actually was. It seriously was. Yeah. It was. It was. You know, a there, challenge. Were, there was stress as normal, but like I think we really had fun all together, and I hope that it shows. Well, it's also this. I mean, I don't mean to say the stakes are low because they're not. Our client is real, but we 
you know, most of the time you're building this, you're taking it somewhere where a psychopath's going to yell at you. For <laughs> <laughs> you know, or just a narcissist, or yeah. garden variety narcissist, maybe. Uh, this, there was none of that. It was yeah. very pleasant. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully that fun's not over yet, because I think the purpose of this model still needs to be fulfilled. Be fulfilled, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, are you guys ready to take this down to film with it? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I can't wait to see how yeah. it looks. I'm only a little afraid. So <laughs> it's going to be so sick. So terrifying to take something you've spent weeks and then putting it in a box and driving it somewhere where it's also hot everywhere. So it's like a 150 degree car. They can't stop. It's like this will end up in a hotel room. I'm terrified for it. At least we're not blowing it up. <laughs> <laughs> if we were blowing it up, it would be full of all sorts of shit that made it cool to look blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's box this guy up. All right. And we'll see everyone in LA. All right. Amazing work, everyone. Next time on the series finale, we take the Frontier ship model down to Los Angeles to be filmed on a virtual production stage with motion control. Thanks to Bethesda Game Studios for partnering with us on this project and inviting us to play in their amazing sandbox. Starfield is out now on Xbox Series X, S, PC, and Game Pass and is rated M for Mature. You can find more details below or visit starfieldgame.com to learn more.